The average American is fat and broke. They're living paycheck to paycheck, they're overweight. So if you are in decent shape and have a solid enough income, you are a 1% man. If you're watching this podcast, you're probably in the top percentage anyways. Because yeah. most people are just droning through life and they're not even thinking. If you want to sell programs, you got to have some sexy secret magic. Hey, follow this carnivore diet. Veganism oh. is the way to ultimate health. Oh, you need to eat only raw foods. You can't cook your foods. It's all these wacky approaches because they're sound bites, they sound interesting and it'll let people believe oh this is what i've been doing wrong you cut out carbs oh it was the carbs that was making me fat no you just cut out an entire food group so your calories have been slashed talk to me about jordan pizza beef and water diet only it's terrible diet advice and 99.9 percent .9 of people do not need to follow this approach when you're building business you find your person your avatar and then you build it all around them mm. so people get it backwards they try to build a product first and they say hey guys all right it's time it. for money Where? <laughs> hey Where's all the customers? So instead, provide value first, find your customer avatar, and then say, oh, I'm gonna build a product around them. So in the industry, I've noticed this whole like natty, not natty topic was like very, oh, let's not talk about it. And then a few people started to say, oh, I'm actually not natty. And then they got a lot of respect for it. So yeah. then what would you say is the best way to spot a fake natty? So you gotta look at, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another episode. I'm joined by someone I've been following for almost a decade. And yeah, as I was saying in the vlog section, uh, when I was procrastinating my exams at uni, when I was doing Ramadan and I was watching the 10K challenges, <laughs> Rob, I've seen your whole journey and it's been very cool, not only as a, as a viewer to see your growth in business and, and yourself and your journey, uh, but also yourself as an entertainer. And it's cool to see how you've grown from just a guy in Ireland, regular guy to now, you know, a very recognizable figure and, and somebody who's a up there in the industry and growing businesses, growing brands. So I think we're gonna have an excellent episode today and we'll jump into a lot of topics. So Rob, thank you for joining me, man. I'm very excited to be here I already. know it's gonna be an awesome conversation and I just wanna say a big thank you. Very great. My man. So yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to kick off with a little bit of a life update. So you've uh, briefly, uh, like an introduction on your, your last eight years on YouTube, if I'm correct. Yep. Eight years on YouTube to today and now you're living kind of in multiple countries, multiple businesses, multiple projects. So how did life go from a regular man in Ireland to a mogul, let's say? <laughs> <laughs> a mogul is, yes. a, is a great word. I'm honored to be called that. <laughs> so I started out in Ireland and you know, I went to school and I was always bottom of the year. You know, I was terrible okay. academically. There was one thing that I was good at, typical jock, I was good at sports, <laughs> and I was good at training, uh, you know, getting myself in the gym and staying in shape. So I always had a passion for fitness. And so I finished up school. Uh, I got bottom of the year. There was about 75 guys in my year. I came number 75 in terms of my results. So okay. if anyone's listening here and <laughs> they're not where they want to be academically, there's still hope. <laughs> And so I end up miraculously getting into a college course that I wasn't really too passionate about. And I end up failing that as well. And so I did first year, failed all my exams. I said, I'll give this one more go. I did second year, failed all my exams. No way. And I said, Rob, something has to change. <coughs> you are stagnant in life. You're mm -hmm. now entering your 20s. Look at yourself. Ask yourself. Be honest with yourself. What do you love to do? What's the only consistent thing thing in your life and go do that if you get any advice from this podcast let it be that and i know mm. it's cliche i know you've heard it a hundred times before but that's the shit that you're gonna succeed at mm. so for me that was fitness i was doing some goddamn bicep curls <laughs> and so i doubled down on it i said okay right i need to make a living out of this i need to get certified did my personal trainer course First exam I ever passed in my life. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was gym. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And so I said, hey, maybe I'm not an idiot. And we're actually taught some of these beliefs that are instilled from us at a young age. And that, you know, we can think put, because we get bad grades that, you know, you're a failure. You see that F on the page. Mm. And you say, oh, you know, I'm destined for failure in life. But you just haven't found the thing that you're passionate about and you're good at. So mm. got my personal trainer exam. And I said, you know, uh, I'll do some training, train people in the gym and everything. But I said, how do I scale? There's got to be more than that. You know, I also want freedom. Some that always mm. resonated with me. And so I saw a lot of guys. I watched so much YouTube fitness. I saw a lot of guys in America. And they were all vlogging on what they eat in a day. Uh, the training programs they're following. The grocery shopping they do. And I said, how can I put my own Irish twist on this? 
So I picked up a camera and the first video is still there. And <laughs> we're, we're going to talk about, you know, money and Dubai and all that stuff in the podcast. It's the most valuable thing I own is all those old videos. It's right. like a time machine I'm yeah, able yeah. to look back on. And that's also why I've also built up a great audience. And people know that my story is real because you can see it. Mm. You can see it on the 720p <laughs> shitty yeah. camera quality. You can go back and see it. And so I just picked up a camera. And if you look on the first 30 seconds on the first video that I've ever uploaded, <laughs> you can see I've held the camera wrong. <laughs> there we go. I have held it in a vertical mode instead of landscape. Okay. So that's the definition hey, come a long way. just yeah. giving it a shot yeah. and just starting and not waiting for the perfect moment. So you got, go on my channel, click sort oldest to newest. You'll mm. see that. So I started out and I see all these guys and I said, look, I'm going to put my Irish twist on it. I'm going to mm. debunk some myths. I'm going to talk about my journey. And it was very funny because I was like essentially jobless. <laughs> yeah, I had no oh, money. I was completely okay. broke. So I said, I'm just going to show you guys my journey of me progressing through the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I did. And I got some hate. You know, people say, hey, oh, yeah. who's this guy think he is? You know, doing, taking his top off on the internet and giving advice. Who's he to give advice? Filming in the gym. Filming which, in the which gym as well. Yeah. It's something that it, some people don't like. Well, even though nowadays there's about 100 tripods in the yeah. gym. I was the first to do it. <laughs> but I uh, said so that. That's how I started my journey. And um, you know, some people hated on it, but a lot of people loved it. And mm. uh, fast forward a couple of years, here we are. Yeah, and I think the reason this, this kind of world did really well is because our generation, we don't look to learn from books or, or we look at YouTube. Mm. So whenever I was looking to learn anything, including gym related stuff, I would just type in something on YouTube, your channel or Guzman channel, they would all pop up and, and that's where I consume. I wanna ask when you were beginning, uh, cause you've mentioned you were an introvert by nature. Yeah. You are now very confident and so forth. But back then when no one's really vlogging, I guess in Ireland even less, uh, and then the, it's a very, it's public. You're in the gym and you're, you're putting out a camera, putting yourself online. That doesn't seem like a, a recipe that would come together for someone who's an introvert, who's living in Ireland back then. How did that all come about? Yeah, so Why did you just randomly think, I need to pick up a camera? Yeah, so we, we had a good chat beforehand. We were defining what an introvert and extrovert is. And it's where you get your energy from. And I love my alone time. That's when mm. I recharge my batteries. Some people recharge their batteries out at the bar in a social mm. situation. I'm the complete opposite. And you're completely right. Picking up a camera... You can even just see how I am back in the old days, speaking to a camera. I'm, you know, I'm inside <laughs> myself. I want to curl up and die. But I looked at the people who are in the top of the industry and I said, what do they do? Mm. They're all documenting. They're all getting on this gold rush that mm. is social media. And in fitness especially, you know, that's probably one of the biggest realms of social media. You know, you've beauty bloggers, fitness yeah. bloggers, real estate, fitnesses right up there some of the yeah. biggest accounts on instagram and tiktok whatever they're fitness accounts mm -hmm. right so if you're in the fitness industry and you're not utilizing social media go stick an ad in the newspaper see how you get on <laughs> right there's actually there's actually no other way to advertise your business there's mm -hmm. literally not you, you, there, there's just not like put an ad inside the bus no one cares yeah so i said i am gonna have to just get over my fear i'm gonna have to stop caring what the neighbors think gonna have to stop caring what the gym bros think there's no other avenue. Mm. And it's just as simple as that. So I said, I'm going to have to pick up the camera. I'm going to have to start giving out information or else no one's going to hear me. I want to figure out the mindset of younger Rob, who was kind of from external told he's a failure. Exam fail, exam fail. And then the qualifications at college failing, failing. You're in kind of a loop of I'm not good enough. Uh, or this isn't, my life doesn't work out. I'm maybe not as intelligent. Whatever the internal dialogue maybe have, might have been to then later on when you're starting a very daunting thing that you don't have friends that are doing it, your friends might even make fun of you and you you have these great visions of I can build a business or I can be this huge influence or whatever the, the goal was. How did you switch from a mindset of I'm a loser or I'm, I'm a failure, who, bottom of the class to I can pick up a camera and, and put myself in front of everyone and probably do well? <laughs> or did you think it was not gonna work out? What was the, what was the dynamic there in your head? Now, this is one I'm, I'm embarrassed about. It's a basic bitch remark, but I'm <laughs> glad you asked, right? I read a book. It's I called guess. The Secret. <laughs> and it's the most common, <laughs> basic self-help book you can read. There was no big eureka moment like, oh, I read, you mm. know, some big complicated book. Do you ever get these book nerds? They flex on the books they read. I'm like, oh, well, well done. Well done. You read a book with big words, right? <laughs> oh, God, the meathead over here. He only read The Secret. 
I don't care, right? I, I picked it up. It was just lying around, around my house. And I read it, okay? And what's it about? It's about positive thinking. Okay? Mm. That, that sums up the book and your thoughts become things, of course. Amazing, man. Right? P- pretty standard. And I read that book and I just, it flipped the script in me. I just said, tomorrow I'm going to wake up and I'm going to look at every glass half full. I'm going to be delusional. I'm mm. literally going to, even though I was broke, I had no job and no opportunities to get a job. I had no yeah. family business. I didn't even have like a friend or a cousin who could give me a job. I was working in these retail jobs, just getting fired every like couple of months yeah. from like showing up late, showing no interest, I, no aim, aim in life. So I said, look, time to be delusional. I'm going to wake up. And just Everything's going to be fine and dandy. Mm. And then all of a sudden, my luck started to change. And here's a fact for you, actually. If you want to change your luck, there's one proven way to do it. And it is believe and tell yourself you're lucky. It's cool. a crazy one. Mm. Yeah, I heard that from, you know, uh, Pomp, you know, um, Pomp Gliano, uh, the guy, okay. he's the crypto guy. Yeah, Anyways, okay. he's, a, he's a big, big podcaster. But I was on, I, this is from his Lex Friedman episode. Okay. But anyways, it's to believe you're lucky and to tell yourself you're Fair lucky. Enough. So right, be optimistic and just start looking at the glass half full. Mm. I woke up the next day and I just started being super positive. Like everything. Even though oh, my so it was world, almost overnight. And it, my life and my luck changed overnight. Mm. It was absolutely crazy. And so instead of viewing myself as a failure, I said, I'm lucky. And I started being really grateful for the things that I did have. I'm not, I wasn't homeless. Mm. You know, I, I was healthy. I didn't have any disability. And there's a, also another quote that makes me emotional. It's from Greg Plett, who was also one of my heroes starting out in the fitness industry. And he talks about how there's kids in, can, in cancer hospitals. They're yeah, burns victims. They have, there's war veterans who get their mm. legs blown off coming home from war. There's people in getting their family shot and killed. You can think deep mm. about some of the shit going on in this world. And you don't have any of that. Yep. You're all right. So I started having this intense perspective, this intense gratitude. And I, I just said, you know, how can I fail? You know, I'm so lucky. I'm so fortunate. And so when I made this mindset switch, life changed the following day. And Interesting. it's like the universe just lined up and, and gave me this path. Mm. And then I said, so you can have all the positive thinking you want, but if you don't have clear direction and action, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. We all know that. So I said, I'm going to make a game plan. So, you know, we'll get into it later. It's the name of the app. I like that. So, <laughs> <a> plug. <laughs> so I said, I'm going to make a game plan. The first thing you want to do when you're setting yourself a game plan, when you're putting it together, you actually think of the end point first. So I'm going to skip how to do it. Okay. I'm skip the middle part. I'm going to go right to the end. I go, oh, where? you actually make a plan and, and engineer I've, towards it. Exactly. Oh, so interesting. I work back. So oh, I go, what's okay, the okay. end goal? What do I, what do I want to, where do I want to go? Yeah, yeah. So I go, I want to be one of the top figures in the fitness industry. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'm the opposite, but okay. I, I would love to hear your perspective of reverse engineering yes. the goals. Okay. So I said, all right, this is where I am now. Nothing. <laughs> and I go, this, so this is writing. This is where I want to be. Top of the industry, you know, yes. really respected, great connections, thriving business. And I go, what's in the middle? So I said, I think. I go, how do I get there? I go, well, it's pretty simple. I need to just positively impact as many people as possible through fitness. Okay, so what does that mean? Right, I I need to get people making better food choices. I need to get more people lifting weights, more Mm. people active, more people sleeping and hydrating and managing their stress better. So then I said, okay, right, now it's all becoming clear. Mm. And then, so I said, let's go deeper on that. And then I said, how am I gonna reach these people to tell them to do this? Well, that's going to be from YouTube and Facebook at the time. It's actually where I started at, or I beat Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> now, Facebook's still good. Still got it. <laughs> you know, especially if you want to run some ads. And then, you know, Instagram and social media in general. Mm. So I so said that was the gap in the middle. And then I just started you know, putting out crazy amounts of content at scale mm. and s- providing value that will benefit people. And once you start doing that, you start getting messages, you start getting clients, you start getting relationships. Some of the yeah. best relationships I've had have been online. How did we meet? Exactly online. So, yeah. so there, there you go. That's how I do it. I get the end goal where I want to be and then I fill in the middle. Awesome. I mean, just to give the mirror of that, I've been always the opposite and I don't know why because my life already has panned out in ways which I would never have expected. Maybe that's through hand of God and, and things aligning, but 
Uh, I've always just said, if I put steps in the right direction and just do good work, put in effort, all of these things, a path emerges and in ways I couldn't expect. So how would I plan for it? Um, but obviously you've got to aim for something at least in the beginning to, yeah. to then build a there's, roadmap. There's off. a lot of ways you can do yeah. it. Uh, but I, I like that way as well. And sometimes, look, a lot of people, they're a little bit lost and they don't know their end goal just yet. And so if you just, you know, you get start, in the gym, you, you start yeah. getting the gym, yeah. then a lot of times you will start to realize your end goal. Like, mm. so I know a lot of people that, you know, they'll just get in the gym, they'll start eating healthy. And then, you know, they'll say, oh, I actually am really passionate about this. And mm. then they'll say, I, maybe I want to become a trainer. Yep. Yeah, maybe I want to become a coach or an author. You know, so there's no one way to do it. Exactly, bro. You meet, you go to the gym, you get in shape and then you have a gym buddy and then he introduces you to his friend. You have an idea together. Life connects in, in crazy ways. Oh, I've yeah. met some of like the best people ever yeah. from the gym. Oh, yeah. Super random one, okay? So I met this guy. We're just in the gym. It's my friend. He owns like the studio gym and so there's only three of us there and he did one of the other guys there who was being trained mm. by my friend was a personal trainer so it was his client. We started talking. I'm like, what do you do? He's like, oh, I'm in crypto. Okay. <laughs> and, and I was like, what's crypto? <laughs> <laughs> long That's, time ago. Then. Long yeah, time yeah. ago. And then so he was like, oh, well, you know, it's basically money without the banks. And I was like, oh, that sounds good. I go, do you make much <laughs> from it? He goes, yeah, here's my current account. It's like three million just sitting in it. And it's like Binance. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty solid. So he bring, we go back to his house, big mansion in Dublin. And I'm like. <laughs> looking around me and then I'm like okay uh, how do I get into this crypto how do I thing? escape the matrix yeah, how do tell I escape me. the matrix tell me and then so he was like alright well unless you've got a large amount to invest you know bitcoin's obviously mm. the best he goes unless you've got a large amount to invest there's some shit coins some old coins that you'll see a big return on and at the time he, he's like look if you got two grand put it in SXP it was, I don't yeah. know if that's even still going <laughs> <laughs> and so he did that and that like 5x so I got like you know 10 grand out of that then I put that into Bitcoin also oh, the truth of Rob Lipset is your crypto oh, actually, that's why a... I'm in Dubai ah, it's not fitness crypto. I knew it. <laughs> but that's just a little side story I, you know I, I made a good bit of money <laughs> not nothing crazy good bit from crypto just from meeting some dude in the gym exactly life is crazy like yeah. that um, now the industry you've been in it's very competitive and some people run away from competition because like, oh, how am I going to get started? It's too late. I've missed the bus. And if you thought that back in your day when there was, I guess it was the time of like the Gymshark crew, yes. the Matt Ogus and, and that squad. You so if, know. You, if, you, if you were looking around <laughs> then thinking, man, these guys are already killing it. How am I going to get started? But then you were like, no, it's people sometimes you should run towards competition because you know it's working. You just got to find your angle. So when you were coming into the industry and, and you put your twist on it, your angle was, let me put my Irish twist on it. Um, what were you doing to stand out in the beginning? And then second of all, as the industry has evolved, I see more extremes lead to more views. Mm -hmm. And that's a very detrimental mindset for a young influencer because they're thinking that's tied to my income, that's tied to my self-worth, the views and so forth. So then it incentivizes crazy diets, crazy challenges, crazy unhealthy uh, bulking cuts, whatever. Yep. What kind of is that journey like? And maybe something challenges you may have faced uh, in, in eight years of, being an influencer for sure so there's a few things so i'm back there and i love this question right all these people oh it's too saturated oh my god you are like thinking the opposite just, just getting started you yeah. are just thinking of the opposite first of all okay saturated industry means good money interest opportunity good yeah. good yeah. industry you just got to be good not dead you, yeah. you just got to be good okay and so if you look at any industry be it like a doctor or you're a mechanic or you own a cafe, mm. anything, right? Just, there's going to be saturation, everything. There's going to be competition. Mm. So how do you rise above anything? Well, you just got to be in the top percentage. And well, you say, oh, that's hard. I have to be in the top percentage. The bar is set incredibly low. Yep. So many people are giving out shitty advice in, in the fitness industry. So many trainers, they need a trainer themselves. <laughs> they, 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 they do. They <laughs> honestly do. So if you're just giving out decent advice consistently you're actually passionate about keeping up with your own fitness mm. <laughs> you're already in the top percentage mm. and if you actually so there's a crazy one this for any business owners so the average american is fat and broke they're living paycheck to paycheck they're overweight so if you're literally this is nothing to do with fitness or this is just general life 
if you are in decent shape and have a solid enough income, couple grand, yeah. you are a one percent man. You the bar are, is low. You are the in the bar bars, is low, and yeah. you are in. If you're watching this podcast, you're probably in the top percentage, anyways, because yeah. most people are just droning through life mm. and they're not even thinking. So the bar is set incre- incredibly low in life in general, and the same goes for any industry. The well, bar is set incredibly. Well, why would you say the bar is? Because when when I thought about the podcast venture. I thought, okay, let me do it properly. Let me get a team. Let me do everything right. And I watched a Homozi quote and it just came up that he was saying the same thing. The bar is so low that podcasting, it was something like 90% of episodes never make it to three. And then the 10% that do, 90% never make it to 20. So you know what we did? We filmed 20 and then launched. Because <laughs> as a result, we're in the 1%. No the work was done. Way. Exactly so what I, we did. I'm a big fan of that fact. So what and would you, you say? You're exactly right. You got It's it's 20 episodes. Yeah. And so I'm like it's a exactly what I did. haven't even hit 20 episodes myself. <laughs> I'm on you're like, almost there, bro. I'm, I'm almost there. I'm on episode 19. <laughs> no, but, but you're still crushing it. Yeah. Right? What would you say is the one p- that... that uh, you know, the bar is here. So do this minimum to, you know, f- carve your niche or at least be in the top percentile with a low barrier in the trading, sorry, in the fitness, I'm trading, in the, in the fitness industry. Uh, simply because I see it like people will be stuck on um, just making short form content because they're shy to speak. So just, you know, getting out of that bubble and speaking, picking up a camera and doing a vlog, you're already kind of jumping, uh, ac- you know, over the masses. Yep. What would you say of this li- that is like, uh, do these few things to really shine and stand out? That's an excellent question. And f- uh, first of all, I love the statistic. We should call that like the podcast theory, like mm. do 20 and you're already in the top percentage. Yep. Yep. And look, the same kind of applies to any platform. I believe Mr. Beast says make 100 videos. And he goes, okay. then look at your top five videos and do more of them. Mm. And so, you know, I would say it's, it, they're all kind of arbitrary numbers. You know, you can blow up on your first episode, but I would say if you want to make a good living, and this is, this is Sullivan, right? Get 10 clients. Okay. Just get 10 and re really put everything into them. And even if you have to, you know, you start off at a very low point, you need to get look at least 10 testimonials and reviews. So what I actually did, I trained people for free. Mm. I train my family and friends free. I would write them plans. And I actually would, this is going as far back as when I was working in like retail and nine to five jobs. I'd be writing plans all day just because I love it. Like I love tinkering at it. You know, I'd love writing the little numbers and everything and thinking how the plan would go and mm. everything. It's just like a fun game. And so I just write all my friends like these big essays and, you know, just all about training and attrition and they would get killer results. They'd go off and do it. And so if you have 10 testimonials, you've 10 clients, whether they're paid or not, that's a solid amount to grow from there and start building out a, a bigger base. Because mm, you get the testimonials to then maybe sell later on. That is the okay. most important thing. So, you know, just coach 10 people for free. Mm. And one thing, people are so entitled that is, they don't want to work for free. I yeah, did all my yeah. first speaking engagements for free. All my first public speak for free. Coach my first clients for free. Mm. Like people are already asking for handouts before even doing anything. It's crazy. Okay, so speaking of which, when I, when we were looking to hire editors and stuff for the podcast, uh, Nagy, the, the head editor that you've met, no joke, you did about 60 interviews. And every single one of them were just low quality, no pride in the work, low effort, because I think it's like the Tate effect. Mm. They just learn, okay, I just need to do these quick edits on CapCut or whatever, and I'm a video editor. Oh yeah, it's the app and, does and, it for and, you. And <laughs> exactly, with AI, it does it for you. So they, they want to make 10K a month, they want to travel the world, and they want to get paid, but provide no value. And it's usually younger people. So it's, it, then if you want to be a high quality editor, mm. just be semi-decent. Yeah. You're already above above the rest. Back to the, the fitness space. So. Uh, in in eight years in the industry uh, and and seeing everything you had, I've seen a lot of fads come and go, yeah. both in content style, diet style, and, and so forth. Um, what do you think is like an evergreen approach, if there is one, or do you have to kind of follow the times? Because I see back in the day it was like how to videos, ma- how to do macros. Then it was the ten k challenges. Yep. Um, is it kind of like you got to move with the industry and stay with the times, or is it true to yourself, make content that you enjoy? So something to look out for, and uh, it's a double edged sword. Thankfully. I've done it well, but basically, if you want to sell programs, you got to have some sexy secret magic, some formula. Be mm. it, hey, follow this carnivore diet. Hey, veganism oh. is, is the way to, to ultimate health. You need to be fasting. You need to eat six times a day. Oh, no, you need to eat animal based. Oh, you need to eat only raw foods. You can't cook your foods. It's all these wacky approaches because they're sound bites they sound interesting and it'll let people believe 
oh, this is what I've been doing wrong. This is what no I was one, missing. Yeah. No one wants to be sold. Hey, here, take a balanced approach. <laughs> like, Calories it doesn't out. stick yeah. out, guys. You know, it's all about what you eat in the entire day. <laughs> guys, like your calories are the main thing. Yeah. You just got to lift some weights. But another one, hit is going to burn calories all day. That's literally not true. Like people want to be sold these crazy approaches because they think they're missing the secret. Mm. But the secret is just sustainability, adherence, and effort. Mm. And thankfully, I never so I can honestly say, I've never sold my soul by coming out with any of these, just fads, mm. just fads. And there's no particular one. Yeah, they come and go in waves, but people will just jump on one because you know, they just like it and they know it's different and they can sell programs from it. So that's the main thing. They're just, people saying shit just to be different. I get that because it's polarizing and it's different and it gets views, gets attention and sales. So it, it's, it's how you compete, let's say. Yeah. But do you think there's any v validity in them? Like like these fad diets of carnivore or veganism or whatever, any polar fringe keto kind of diet type, does it work <laughs> or is it worth it? If you follow something and it starts at the space diet, it's probably bullshit. Okay. The Carnivore, fill in the gap. Yeah. The carnivore diet, the vegan diet, the raw diet. You know, mm. so just think of the words the and diet on the screen and then a little gap and okay. fill the space. If it starts with the and ends with diet, it's probably BS. Well, it's just a flexible, maintainable approach, balance. It's just the, the, the solid things. And But there is one thing. So here's the one thing that is consistent with every diet. And it is putting you in a calorie deficit. Mm. And it's going to be restricting you in some way shape or form so think about it you can lower your calorie intake from closing the window where you eat food so that's intermittent fasting or another one is carb backloading mm. or another one is no carbs after six these are all just ways of dressing up time restricted eating windows yes. and then when you have no carb approach okay you cut out carbs oh it was the carbs that was making me fat no you just cut out an entire food group so your calories have been slashed yeah okay oh a uh, carnivore diet okay all of a sudden you can't eat donuts bread <laughs> and you can't eat anything yeah. basically talk to me about jordan peterson exactly. who's on a beef and water diet only exactly no wonder you know he's gonna get results from that now yeah. fair enough to jvp he has a very rare condition, apparently, so he says, but it's terrible diet advice and that 99.9% .9 of people do not need to follow this approach. You know, okay. I love his advice. He's changed my life. Uh, I, he would be a dream guest to get in the podcast. Probably not going to go now. <laughs> <laughs> Saying his nutrition advice sucks, but it, it's terrible advice mm. and that most people do not need to mm. just consume steak. And this come from a guy that loves steak. Talk to me about the meteoric rise of Liver King because he kind of symbolizes what we've just said. A fringe, extreme, crazy shape, crazy content, eye-catching clips, eating raw liver, raw heart, going on podcasts, giving testicles to, to the host or whatever. Like, of course, that's going to get views, attention, and probably lie in his pocket. And then he had a big expose. Uh, so how do you feel as someone who's been in the industry a lot longer and, and tried to do things right, seeing someone become uh, internationally known, probably super wealthy? How does that feel for someone like you? I've never seen an example quite like it. <laughs> in my entire decade in the fitness industry. Didn't you have I've, like fake abs, like implant abs or something? So they look fake. I don't I don't think they're fake. I think okay. he just has like really blocky ab genetics. Okay. They do look kind of weird. And there is some surgeons that have came out. I don't know about that. They do look super weird. But you, you can just tell by the delts and the traps is red skin and the amount of sheer muscle he has and his low body fat that's clearly on Wait, gear. So you don't, you're saying I don't need to eat testicles to make things. <laughs> no? <laughs> I, I have an eight out of eight. As far as you're I'm doing aware. Just fine, eh? As far as I'm aware, I, I'm doing all right. But I've never seen anything quite like it. And I'm just shocked that people actually believed it. Like obviously yeah. everyone in, in the industry, in the bodybuilding industry knew he wasn't natural, but it just goes to show that when you reach the general population, that people will believe anything mm. because they want to buy into this magic bullet, this this secret yeah. that people will literally believe anything. And so I couldn't believe that people believed it, but it, it's wild to see. Have you ever tried it in your journey, maybe for content or for yourself, just to see how you feel? Like a, a stint of veganism or a stint of 
carnivore diet or maybe you know intermittent fasting what have, have you given them a try or are you just saying it's not needed oh i follow intermittent fasting myself okay yeah okay. yeah I, I, but i'm again i'm not saying that it's anything magic i mm. literally just do it because it's easier to manage that i'm cooking less it's easier to track you only have to log on to my fitness pal two or three times a day it's good for productivity if i have a huge meal in the morning i'm sluggish mm. it's no extra benefit for fat loss or muscle gain and it's so I've actually got like I'm in the position to argue with the IFers, the intermittent fasters. I'm going to be like, you guys are literally bullshitting. I follow it. You guys are literally bullshitting saying there's magic benefits to it. I mm. am one who does it and I know there's no magic benefits to it. There we so go. I'm like, fucking guys, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here to tell you you're wrong. Mm. I actually follow it, but for different reasons. And so I do intermittent fasting myself. I usually have my first meal around midday, post-workout. Carnivore diet, again, it's all really high quality foods. Like mm. there's a lot of meals I post, like for my, if I do eat breakfast or for my first meal, I'd have like eggs, steak and avocado. Super That's simple. That's a fantastic yeah. meal. That's delicious. It's nutrient dense. It's high protein. Mm. Do I think it's giving me magic benefits? Am I selling programs? Mm. As guys, buy the card. For, no. I'm like, I'm following a, a lot of these pro approaches and there's always a little bit of truth to them. You know, mm. there always is but I'm not marketing it as something special as that's dishonest. Mm. What about supplementation? Because I feel like people, they go from diet to diet to diet and they're like, hey, this doesn't work because they give up. It's not sustainable. Yes. I, I can't just eat this food group only. And then you rebound, you gain weight again. And then you come across the wonderful world of supplements. So then you think, <laughs> okay, I need these fish oils and these vitamins and this one and this one and create, and then it's get, it gets all over the place. Yeah. So when, and then that opens up a whole billion dollar industry trying to sell you and say, you need this and, and affiliates with, with influencers. Yep. Supplementation, is it needed at all? Or is there certain like 80, 20 where take, take these 20% of the supplements to get 80% of the effect? It's more like 5%, if not less of your results will come from taking supplements. And I'm, here's supplements I, rec I recommend and that work. I work, full disclosure, I work with Ghost supplements since 2018. They're amazing, they're great, code lips it, blah, blah, blah. But I never, ever say, I always make it clear that it's gonna be 5% of your results. Okay. So the things I recommend is whey protein, which can be argued is not even a supplement because you don't supplement your diet with whey protein. First of all, you don't hit your protein. Like let's say I eat 200 grams of protein a day. I don't hit 200 with food and put a scoop on top of that. I incorporate uh, it. And yeah. another thing is whey protein, where does it come from? Dairy. It's a byproduct of it's dairy. Food derivative, is yeah. cottage cheese a supplement? Is yogurt a supplement? That's where it's from. Mm. So technically, I know it's in a condensed form and that it comes in a powdered form. So, you know, if you want to argue, though, I'm not sure if you can say whey protein is like a chemical or mm. a supplement. But whey, let's just say it is. Whey protein is great for convenience and just a pure source of bioavailable protein. It's a very high quality source of protein, rich in amino acids. And it's also great for cooking to make your diet easier. You can you know, add it to oats or whatever. You can make a smoothie. It's great. So the first thing I'd recommend is usually a good whey protein powder. Mm -hmm. Second of all is creatine monohydrate, which is the most proven and studied supplement yes. in history. Five grams of creatine monohydrate a day, every day. You know, take it whatever time you want. Just be consistent with it. That's it. It's going to improve your strength and your power, and it's going to help you just build more muscle from improving your training. Simple as that. Ultra cheap as well. Like high ROI. Okay. How, how much steak do you have to eat to get like the equivalent dosage of, of creatine from the supplement? There's actually an interesting bit of research and an interesting view on it that there's a few creatine non-responders that people who have a really high meat diet mm -hmm. supplement the creatine doesn't do anything for Jordan them because they already naturally <laughs> have large amounts but then when like someone a vegan or something w would go on creatine they'll see great results because they've mm. been lacking creatine in their diet i'm not sure of the amount the exact amount of steak i simply don't mm. know also sign of a good trainer if they don't know something they'll just say it yeah, true, there you true. go. They yeah. all waffle around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just be honest. About it. So I don't know the exact amount of meat you would have to mm. eat to get five grams. But either way, supplementing five grams, it's just so cheap. It's like a couple mm. of cents. And it's a very proven supplement. Next up, I would look at a caffeine slash pre-workout. So that's just something that you take before gym. It's one of the most... Uh, taken drugs in the world you yeah. know be it from coffee or people just taking caffeine tablets again you know just take that before working out you don't even if like a student is on a, a, an extreme budget 
yeah, you can just buy some coffee. It doesn't get right. cheaper than that. And you can get your caffeine from that. If you do have a, a little bit more to spend and it's like a luxury item, you can and buy a good pre-workout. You know, mm-hmm. they're still relatively cheap. Most are like a euro a scoop, if not mm-hmm. less. And there's some other good ingredients in most pre-workouts, like for example, beta alanine that will improve endurance. Mm-hmm. That will just help with your workout. But again, not necessary, but caffeine, it's a solid mm-hmm. one. After that, some vitamins and minerals that I would take is fish oils especially if your diet is lacking in oily fish. Another good one, especially if you're from Ireland or the UK, is vitamin D. D. Yeah. yeah, there you go. So mm-hmm. yeah, they'd be my top four picks. And then like there's other stuff that, you know, I would recommend like uh, vitamin C or some vitamins. Mm-hmm. If you're deficient in certain vitamins, like go for them. But they're kind of the main ones um, okay. that, that would I recommend first. You know, I have, I have an interesting anecdotal story with my brother. And he's living in the UK, so miserable weather. Yeah. And he's also a doctor, so he's doing quite a lot of night shifts. So his sleep was irregular, night yeah. shifts, and then in the morning, long hours. So I think the combination of um, sleep uh, being irregular and also being in a grey environment all the time, yeah. he was starting to feel like really low mood and really low energy. So he, he decided to go get his testosterone checked. And they gave the range. I forgot the number, but there's like the accepted range. And he, he was just right at the bottom of the range. And yeah. the doctor was actually like, you're all good. You're within the normal range. And then my brother, being a doctor himself, kind of realized that this range includes 80-year-old men. I'm in my yes. 20s. I should be at the upper end of it. So he took it upon himself to kind of go on a journey to try and boost his own testosterone naturally through... Uh, he, he realized he was deficient in vitamin uh, D3. Yeah. And I think that was one of the big boosters. And he decided to do different things to a protocol that he made for himself. He got himself tested a couple of months later and he was just right at the top of that spectrum. Crazy. Have you done anything like that or maybe have a protocol in place to naturally boost your testosterone to get the most out of your efforts in the gym? Absolutely. Great topic. So first of all, just as we're talking about it, improving your intake of vitamin D is great. Even better if you can get it from sunlight. Mm. So getting out in the morning, and this is something that I've just learned in recent years from Andrew Huberman, who's really big on this Legend, is yeah. getting like he constantly harps on in a good way about morning sunlight and it's actually something that i never really thought of or bothered to do you know i'd always get out in the sun but mm. i never really thought about getting up the second and getting your face in the sun as soon as it rises and mm. i'm someone who actually suffers from sleeping issues a lot i go to bed in the evening and i stare at the ceiling and my mind is racing having that morning sunlight because it fixes your circadian, circadian rhythm yeah. like that's truly when you wake up when mm. you kind of think about it logically like when, you're, when your eyes see the sun that's when the brain says all right it's mm. daytime and so getting that morning sunlight has not only improved my vitamin d levels of course but my sleep and that segues us perfectly into the biggest factor in improving your testosterone levels is sleep oh, it's yeah. just like Sleep is when you char- it's like when you charge your phone. At night. Yep. It's what sorts out everything. It sorts out your hormone levels, your mental health, your training. Oh my God, this is the perfect segue. So you, you have... Yeah, segue. We have <laughs> used those machines anymore. So, <laughs> I'm like, is that even a word? I'm like, use it. Segway. I'm just picturing myself on a segue now. <laughs> going from point to point. So, right, we got... Uh, did you ever do those videos where they're on the segways and doing like a squat or something? <laughs> Bro, yeah, the fitness trends are the wildest. Yeah, no, no. that's crazy. Right, so we started off with vitamin D. We went into sunlight and then we went into sleep. And now we're going to go into training. Mm. So, you know, we got all those things in check, so we're feeling strong. So lifting weights in particular is, is just a fantastic way to mm. boost your testosterone. And then we're going to finish off the holy trifecta, or whatever it is, with nutrition. So high-protein diet, but more mm. importantly, fats. So your fats is your, what's going to affect your hormones the most. Overall health, very important as well. And your fats will dictate that too. But so we have like protein for recovery and building muscle, carbohydrates for energy, getting the pump in the gym, and then fats. People people often think like, you know, what role do they play? And it's for your general health and your hormones. So guys that, you know, they get extremely lean and their actual body fat get low gets low, and then their diet gets low in fat, their hormones and their testosterone. Yes go to shit so your fat intake is particularly important Mm. and you want 20 percent of your diet to consist of fats so if you're on 
you know, 3,000 calories a day. You mm. want to have 20% of those calories coming from fats. Another calculation you can do, it'll work out roughly the same, is you want to multiply your body weight by about 0.4 grams to 0.5 grams. It's another way to figure out your fat intake. Mm. So we've all heard one gram per pound of body weight for protein. Yeah, We've all heard that. But another important calculation is the 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 for fat intake. Okay, for hormone yeah. profiling. Oh, uh, yeah, and yes. just general health as mm. well. Fair enough. Yeah. When it comes to uh, uh, recovery, you mentioned sleep uh, and then also there's other things that are fads, let's say, probably inspired by content and the same thing as nutritional fads. You have maybe recovery fads. So let's say the sauna, right, red light therapy, the ice baths, all of there's probably a list uh, yes. longer than that. Wait, all things there, I do, by the way. <laughs> okay, so do, yeah. do you find any of them worthwhile, effective, and, and something you would say uh, as a recommendation to uh, people trying to go to the gym or just feel better? So I would almost put these in the same level of importance and bracket as supplements. I'm going to get killed. <laughs> With the Wim Hofs, they're going to kill me. The Hoopermans are going to kill me, right? <laughs> they think it's all about the cold water. They think it's all about the red light therapy, the, all about the sauna. I do all these things. Do I think that's going to be 50% of my results? No. I, th mm. I would chalk it down to just being a percentage, kind of like supplements. I just think they're the cherry on top of the big mm. three, training, nutrition, sleep. Okay. So they're the big things that are going to really make a difference to your lifestyle, your physique, and your general fitness. And then all the biohacker things and the supplements – they're just a very small percentage on top. Mm, fair enough. When it comes to the industry, and it, you've, we've kind of spoken about the negative, but there's also a lot of positive in there. Yep. And being in the space, I've seen you collab with huge names and uh, you know, probably a great experiences with a lot of them. Who's in the industry that is someone you've collabed with and you think, yeah, that's my boy, that's, that's someone I really respect or maybe someone I really look up to. And then who's also up there that's just like, he's a fake. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's just a waste of time. <laughs> right, so... Christian Guzman, who I'm, I'm going to his wedding next month. We spoke about it briefly in the car. Uh, we spoke about him building Alfleet, who I'm just honored to work with. And I'm honored to say that, you know, I've been with them since 2016. It's like a badge yeah. of honor in the industry because you know, they don't take on that many people. And it's just such a He's a legend. Monument. He's, He's a, a legend, legend of the industry. And yep. so for anyone wondering, like, is this guy the real deal? Or is he a guy that takes a picture of his laptop at 5 a.m. and goes back to sleep? Mm. <laughs> we all, we all <laughs> puts a timestamp on it. Instagram story, good night. <laughs> this dude's the real deal. You know, he, he works painfully hard. Like, I am, I wouldn't swap places with him because he, I couldn't do it. Yeah. It would drive me insane. So the fact that, you know, uh, I started out queuing for him at an expo, to now going to his wedding and being one of my closest friends. Work work until your idols become your friends. Yeah, not, not rivals. Not rivals. Yes. No, you want to be bros. You want to <laughs> exactly. collaborate. So, you know, him for sure. Max Tuning, again, someone I was just talking to the other day and he's been a huge inspiration behind starting a physical product, Fuel Cakes. Mm -hmm. He's just absolutely killed it with Sarah Strips. And if anyone wants to follow a crazy entrepreneurial journey, there's just two wild brands. As there are two um, amazing guys. And mm -hmm. now... For the bitchy, the bitchy person. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to name names. But oh, come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's... <laughs> we got the clip. <laughs> There's the clip. So, I remember it was the LA Fit Expo. God, it would have been 2015, 16. Young Rob, baby face Rob. Okay. You know, I was there with my protein at the time. I, I wasn't with Ghost. And, uh, you know, the expo finished. And I was, I was, fin I was clearing up, you know, get, get my backpack on. Let's go home. And I saw... <laughs> okay and i you know i was always an og he's been in the industry very long time bit of okay. a cloudy guy you know you can you can tell you know he's a cloudy dude and i saw and some people said this to me before he only cares if you've got followers uh. and i went up to him i said i was starting out on youtube and all this and that and dude couldn't have been less enthusiastic and mm. just so disinterested and it's from that moment that I said, no matter what, I don't care where anyone's at in their journey, I'm going to give them 100%. I'm going to be interested. I'm going to ask people questions. I'm going to be mm. enthusiastic because I never want to be like that. It was just, it was like finding out Santa Claus isn't real. You know, you're just like, yeah, oh yeah. man, one, one of these guys who, someone you look who up I look to. up to. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you could say he's just having a bad day, but I have actually heard from many people in the industry okay. that he's just a very cloudy person. 
and so yeah mm. that, that's uh that changed me for the better really you know because i'm like i'm gonna be a very enthusiastic person give everyone good energy when you look at the industry as a whole it's it's a very interesting setup because a lot of people correct me if i'm wrong a lot of people get into the gym especially at a younger age usually dudes from a position of insecurity either because they want to be more confident because they're getting bullied or they just had a heartbreak or they just want to get girls like it's always from a place of i'm not enough let me fill it with the gym yes so when you then get that and then you stop getting bullied and then you maybe get the girls or whatever that fills that void with maybe an ego and yeah. overconfidence and then you think you're the man Completely. especially when you're above the average in, in the population yeah and then pair that with fame money followers all of that i could forecast that the industry just being a toxic competitive heated environment yes is it like that behind the scenes or is it actually very like community and you, you have a lot in common uh, and you know you, you go for dinners together train together or what side of the spectrum yeah, is the industry it's, on? it's more like that you would you would think it's a toxic and macho yes. and uh, toxic masculinity but it's really not i've uh, met some of just the nicest people in the fitness industry you know i'm going to a coaches conference on friday someone in the gym came up and invited me it's super collaborative because it's literally, if you don't collaborate, you're screwed. Mm. Like, everyone's going to talk. And, like, you know, everyone is is here to help each other. And if you're just some dickhead that goes an outsider. and just mean to everyone, mm. an outsider, it, you're not going to go far. Mm. And people talk, and so you know, that's why you, nice guys, they don't finish last. Mm. You know, a lot of the people at the very top of the industry, they're some of the best people that I've met. And oftentimes, the people that I've met who are at the very top, they're the real deal. Fair enough. Yep. I want to I wanna talk now a little bit into the entrepreneurial endeavors of uh, the influencer. So you've been in the industry for a while and you built a brand and through that you found your tribe. People that could learn from anyone, but they learn want to learn from you. They, yep. they like your content because of your style, your charisma and so forth, your twist. Yep. And that usually leads to a tribe. And if you can provide them value, you know, that's, uh, that's a business opportunity. How have you navigated that and uh, that area of, I see you have multiple businesses and some of them seem more like, that's just right up your alley. I'm thinking fuel cakes. Yeah. And then other things are more just like, oh no, it's, it's a good opportunity. Let's say the collabs and so forth. Yeah. So talk to me about your journey in entrepreneurship as a fitness influencer. Absolutely. So when you're building a business, right, you find your find your person, right? Your your avatar is uh, the actual yes. word for it. Is you find your, your person and then you build it all around them. So mm. people get it backwards. They try to build a product first and they say, hey guys, all right, it's Buy time it. for money. Yeah, yeah. Give me the money. Where, <laughs> hey, where's all the customers? Where is everybody? And they get it backwards. So mm. instead, provide value first, find your customer avatar, and then say, oh, I'm going to build a product around them. So, you know, I made all these full day of eating videos, building muscle. My audience is 90% male. Guys in their 20s, okay, they're asking me for plans already. Well, there's the coaching business in your face oftentimes the business you should start is staring at you in the face mm. so you build your customer and your you provide value first mm -hmm. you build around that so the coaching business was the first thing i ever did the first actual payment i ever got online was from an ebook for 20 euro <laughs> it was like hey, so there was also an option for 30 <laughs> euro so there was the training ebook the nutrition ebook they were both 20 euro and you could buy two of them for a good deal 30 <laughs> euro bundle deal <laughs> And so I built that first. And when I was writing it, I would just say, hey, you know, what would I really like to give to myself when I was starting out in the gym? And I actually sold <laughs> thousands of them, like a lot. And so then I had, that was my first little business. And then I say, all right, I'm going to work with some individuals one on one. Mm. And then, so that was, it was so prehistoric. That was like all done via email and like Word docs and everything. And then in 2018, I built an app, mm -hmm. Lips of Fitness, which is now Game Plan. And that's when I first scaled. I, I hate that word because everyone's scale, scale, scale. Like <laughs> I've heard it so much. It's up there with words like entrepreneur. It's almost a grandiose feeling about mm. it. But that, that was the first time I kind of got a team behind me. So an app developer, a graphic designer, uh, someone to onboard clients, uh, someone to just manage the whole software. And so that's when I was like, oh, whoa, I'm actually like working a bit less and reaching and impacting more people. Mm. So then we have the app. 
then after a few years of doing that, I said, I want to scale it back and do really intensive one-on-ones. That's now where we have the high ticket coaching. coaching. So that's my main source of income. It's my main bread and butter. And now also sponsors were as a brand ambassador. You know, that's not my own business it's other people's, but I guess if you're an advertise, if you're like a YouTube channel, and you're taking on sponsors. Well, I guess your channel's a business, so technically yep. it is. But you know that is just you get that from making connections and gaining an audience. You know, so there's not much scale. Well, there's scale, but you know, it, it's not my business. So, mm-hmm. but businesses that are mine are Game Plan, the high ticket coaching that's called Game Plan VIP. So we've got them in place. And then I think, all right, come on, I want to do something a little bit fun, right? Something a little bit physical. I see Christian Guzman has the 3D energy drinks because mm-hmm. he drinks white monsters every day. Max Tuning, he makes Sarah strips because he has Sarah Patch kids <laughs> every day. I go, what do I eat every day? <laughs> and again, the, the business is staring at you in the face. Yeah, yeah. I go, I'm making these protein pancakes with 15 <laughs> different ingredients. I'm messing up the kitchen. <laughs> I'm making these every day. And my, one of my most viewed videos is how to make protein pancakes. Mm. So I said, I'm going to make a protein pancake company. And I did and sold out straight away in the, in the first couple of okay. days. And so I've done uh, quite a few restocks and I'm still figuring it out. You know, I only relaunched it um, about six months ago. And so, yeah, it's a very new industry for me. And it's, it's kind of like I'm living life on creative mode. Like I'm not like, I'm, it's not my main business. So I'm having fun with it. Yes. And I'm like, if like, you know, if it's out of stock for a while or, oh God, you know, I need to change this ingredient. It's cool. You know, so I'm I'm having a lot of fun with that and mm. I'm learning about a new industry. And you've unlocked a memory in my mind. I'm, I'm remembering now, in my uni days, like 2016, 2017, you and good old uh, Joe Delaney yeah. making a pancake stack together. And I, I remember watching and thinking, why are they putting Greek yogurt in it? <laughs> and I tried it and it was a sick pancake. Yeah. So that begs the question now, what makes the perfect pancake? Oh my God, well... Fuel cakes, of course. <laughs> Buy right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So uh, fuelcakes.com. But so it's all about like a good consistency and thinking a little bit outside the box. Like so, putting like egg whites and yogurt in it's up to thicken it up. Because if you just use the classic like you know whey and milk and you, you try mm. fry it on a pan, it's just gonna fall apart. But so it is quite difficult to actually get it really good. So that's why, and it's also very messy. You know, if you have a lot of different ingredients, that's how I. Uh, you know, I'm not selling anything magical. Just selling convenience and a fun product. Mm. So yeah. Now, Pancakes. now when you when you reach uh, <laughs> later in your career, now obviously business is a big portion of your life, and you've grown older, and and you probably started to enjoy that journey. Does it ever feel like you have to make content for the sake of the business and to to keep up the brand and so forth? Because it started off as a hobby to see where it goes. Now it went somewhere. Now it's big, and and now brands are relying on you because you're an affiliate yeah. and you're representing a lot of people. And people also build a connection to you. Do you ever feel like content and social media becomes draining and a job, or is it always fun? Absolutely, it does become a little bit all-consuming at okay. times. Like it becomes twenty-four-seven, especially when you've got like deadlines, deadlines to meet for a product launch or mm. for another brand. It can get, it can take the fun out of it. It can get stressful. And when you're always like, oh God, I need to get more views than last time. And you know, you attach your value <laughs> to engagement, which yeah. a lot of people yeah. do. And that's very Black Mirror. That is super dystopian, dystopian mm. and strange. So one thing I've learned to do, and it's why I've been able to be in this industry so long without getting burnout and just like keep going. Like there's some people that they literally start in the fitness industry and they, their head gets wrecked. They just, they just quit. A lot of people quit. Like yeah. no, not, it's not many people that have been making content and working in the fitness industry for 10 years. Like I have there, there, re- there really actually isn't. And a lot of people get burnt out. And the reason that I haven't been, I, the reason I haven't become burnt out the reason I haven't gotten burnt out is because I've remained stoic in terms of the views and the engagement. Okay. If a video tanks, whatever. It's just a video, you make another one. You'll have another viral banger that will, you know, will mm. boost your business and everything. If you attach yourself, and this goes for any business, this is actually the perfect analogy for anything. If you run an e-com store or whatever, you have a bad month of sales. Do you give up? Do you start crying? Yeah. No. You can't attach yourself to a bad month. And that's the key to being a good entrepreneur is be stoic. Mm-hmm. Don't celebrate the good times and don't get caught up in the bad times. Wonderful. You have a good month. Cool. Mm. You have a bad month. 
That's also cool. You make a very good trader. There, like, hey, a stoic mind. Yeah, 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 man. That's, that's why you know Bitcoin's always going crazy. I just leave it there. Dollar cost average. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Well, um, when it comes to um, you know continuing on, do you think you'll be a, in the online influencer space forever, or do you kind of have an exit plan? Uh, of like, let me set up these kind of businesses, let's say fuel cakes that can go beyond me. Yeah. Or are you not really thinking that far ahead? Oh no, I, I absolutely am. So for just a quick one on fuel cakes, a lot of people buy the follow the page, right? I'm, I'm, I'm hands on. I'll click through the followers. I'm like, who's this? Do you okay. know what I always like? When I click on a, a page, it, say, it doesn't say follow back. They just follow fuel cakes or okay. they just follow game plan. Ah, interesting. I'm like, yeah, nice. Yeah. I really like that. And I know Christian D Guzman does the same. And it's actually so funny, this is this little side story. So I was in Alfland, you know, Christian's yes. gym. And the place is packed. And of course, a lot of people come up and ask him for photos. So many people don't know who he is. It's completely what? outgrown him. And someone actually no came way. up. Oh. Someone came up and like, they asked him for directions or something. <laughs> they're like, hi, do you work here? Do you know where the toilets are? And he was like, uh, yeah, I think they're over there. No way. I swear to God. And he loves it. That's powerful though. That's, that's a real business. Though. So to, to, um, to unpack your question a little bit. Yes, I want to build something bigger than me. And now I'm going to go back to, will I be doing this for a long time? My favorite podcaster, everyone's favorite, is Joe Rogan, 54. Like, yeah. another, another one that I love that we spoke about already, Jordan Peterson. Mm. In his 50s, if not 60s, I'm not too sure. Uh, Gary V. All these guys, you know, they're all, they're all getting on. And yeah. to be honest, they're all at the top. Because how can you be giving out life advice when you haven't lived your life yet? All, Grant Cardone. Yeah. I can keep, I can go all day. All the best podcasters, all the best YouTubers, they're all old dudes. <laughs> Not old dudes. Yeah. Older, let's they're say. All, they're <laughs> all older. They're all like 10, 20 years older than me. Yeah, that's true. And so I look at them and I'm like, whoa, I've got so much more to go. Mm -hmm. And I want to be having these conversations. I love this. I'm having a great time. You're having a great time. Amazing time. I'm having man. a great time. <laughs> I want to be doing this when I'm 50, mm. even longer. And like imagine being this needs to happen we need more 50 year old fitness influencers <laughs> they're actually a, i know i know actually a few and yeah they're, they're online they're on instagram there's there's a good few and like their usernames are like fit over 50 these guys are cleaning up oh, these yeah. guys have unlocked true. a niche true with a lot of money so if you stay on top of your shit you know it's a very very evergreen industry mm. so i have no plans on quitting anytime soon. there we go and even if i did I could build brands that no one knows I have anything to do with. You mentioned earlier on in the pod that you like to uh, make a goal and reverse engineer towards it. So you kind of probably envisioned today and this kind of life set up and, yeah. and worked your way towards it. Now that you are here, what's your next milestone and how have you reverse engineered towards the next mountain to climb in your career? So this year, now the last like two years or so, I've been rebuilding up game plan fuel cakes. And now that I, I built them, I don't want to say I lost myself along the way, but sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, I need to strip it back to basics. You know, I need to go, what got me here in the first place? And for me, it's YouTube. I think it's the most valuable platform. You, you didn't come up to me today and say, hey, I watched your Instagram picture from two years ago. <laughs> no one ever says that. It's freaking ab selfie. Fucking nothing. <laughs> but people come up to me and they say, hey, I watched your video on how to yes. calculate my macros. I watched your uh, pancake video. I, video, video, video. So for me, this mm. year is all about uh, getting super consistent on YouTube again. I think I've uploaded three videos this week and it feels good. Oh. Yeah, and so I want to get really consistent, strip it all back to, to YouTube. So that, that's my current big goal for this year. Mm. And it's actually interesting because you run a big media operation, but not the biggest media team. No. Is that by design? Is that for margins? Or is you like to be in the creative process? So I have hired these big videographers with cameras strapped her back and had five editors at one time oh, wow. and oftentimes right so an editor will send me the finished piece of content this actually just happened and this is no like fault on the editor only you can pick up on your awkward moments or your mistakes so like i'll mumble my words i'll mess up or i'll say something incorrectly and only you would notice so the editor will send me back an edited YouTube video right. and I will still end up editing it. <laughs> I'll still end up going over. Now, the bulk of the work is done, mm. but you still need to be quite hands-on. So having these huge teams, it's kind of just um, 
unnecessary and it's just increasing your your cost lowering your profits and mm. there's still just things that you have to do yourself outsource and delegate as much as possible so for example my app team i'm technologically <laughs> is that a word terrible so you know mm. they run all that there's a few things that no one else can do no one else can be rob lipson until ai comes and is literally bang <laughs> on about me you know and so there's a few things no one else can speak on camera there's a mm. few things that i have to do so keeping a lean team i find that it's going to create more genuine content. Some of the best people I know, uh, like James Smith or Sean Casey, just two guys killing it in the mm -hmm. industry, they're, oh, it's all done on the phone. It's so minimal, True. their videos, yeah. and their audience really resonates with that. In today's day and age, we went through the phase in online and social media where things got over edited. And you know Sam Sulek? Sam Sulek? The new, the new guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere and is just a perfect example of uh, how people are now sick of the over edited fake stuff. True. They just want someone who's not even editing their clips. Mm -hmm. Like there's literally, he just lets the camera run. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just a kid who loves bodybuilding. And everyone has resonated with that so much. It's like the fastest growing channel ever. Mm. So it's a real sign of the times that, uh, you know, just keep things minimal. Uh, I want to move on to another topic. Um, so in the industry, I've noticed uh, in the beginning when I was watching, this whole like uh, natty, not natty topic was like very, oh, let's not talk about it. And then yeah. a few people started to say, oh, I'm actually not natty. And then they got a lot of respect for it. So yeah. then a lot of more names came out and said, oh, I'm actually not natty and actually documented the whole thing. Uh, and it actually made the industry nicer in a sense. Yep. Would you ever later on in your career, maybe when naturally your testosterone drops or, or whatever, as an experiment, let's say, would you ever delve into that side of fitness? Yeah, so I'm definitely pro TRT. If you're doing okay. it properly, even steroids in general, the reason it's a hard one to talk about because it's illegal in a lot of countries. Oh, and true. I know people that they've got their houses raided because they're basically saying, hey, I've got a load of steroids in my house or oh, they yeah, get yeah, a... Yeah. This is a crazy one. I know some person, they're not able to travel to America. Because so they said it on Because they said it mm -hmm. online. And when you Google it, your name, it comes up. Other people that maybe they are, were in the fitness industry and then they want to get a corporate job. They want to leave the fitness industry and you Google their name and it comes up. So it's still a taboo subject. But if you're doing it properly with a doctor and you're not like... The difference between a cycle and TRT is cycle is large amounts for a short period of time and you stop. That's not healthy. If you're doing it therapeutically, like the name, then it's it's an all right thing to do and it's perfectly healthy. And it can it can actually change a, a lot of men's lives in terms of their mental health and overall quality of life. What would you say is the best way to spot a fake Nazi? So you got to look at their shoulders, their traps, as this is where there's a lot of androgen responders. You okay. can see if someone's made a lot <laughs> of fast progress all of a sudden. And they also just have that look. The, it's hard to go by just the look though because some of the like most jacked guys like i believe there's some genetic freaks out there who mm. are just like michael jordan seven foot tall mm. you know they're just like the mike thurston i actually i actually think mike is natural you know i've asked mike me and him have came in from a night out and i've said we we're both absolutely fucked and i go mike <laughs> you know i gotta bro? ask you like are you actually natural <laughs> and he's like he promised me he is and we'd be traveling together <laughs> i've looked at his fucking wash bag okay there's nothing in it and then i know guys with shitty physiques who take mm. care so it's hard to spot someone just based on look but you know someone it's usually the rounded shoulders and you know the big massive traps that are that are the biggest giveaway but trt would have would it have a uh, benefits on the physique because it's, it's actually not changing anything it's not boosting you it's keeping you at a normal level it, it, it would definitely because your levels increase and they go to like consistently high levels okay. it would definitely improve your physique for sure okay, yeah. okay. not as much as like it's more of like a health and quality of life thing compared to like a cycle mm. you know so let's say a cycle is like a th I don't know I'm really bad it's not my expertise. Let's say cycle is like 600, let's just say 500 milligrams for three months. And then TRT would be like 125 or 200 oh, yes, milligrams okay. for a week. So it's like a very small, consistent dose <clears throat> over a very high, you know, shortened dose. I think a lot of people do that. Like a Joe Rogan, he's, he's spoken about it. The yeah, TRT Andrew stuff. Yeah, Huberman. Yeah, 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 a lot of these guys. Yeah. Fair enough. Sure. Now, uh, to kind of wrap up the episode, we have reached a point in your career when you're traveling a lot which you used to do a lot, but now you're relocating yep. or partially relocating. So you moved away from Ireland to Marbella 
And now Marbella has become a base for several years. You built out a villa there. Yep. And now you're potentially moving out here. So speak to me about that process and, and why even Dubai? So the, I hate to say this. It sounds so tasty, but it's <laughs> ex escaping the matrix to a certain sense. So okay. we had a, a little conversation mm. about how, you know, there's the matrix and they're always watching, especially if you're a high profile individual, you want to diversify yourself and you want to have as much residencies as possible, have as much passports and mm. uh, uh, as much, not banking per se, like holding companies even. You want to keep the matrix guessing. You know, mm. keep the tax man guessing. You know, you want to privatize yourself in a certain way. There's actually an amazing channel I, I, you'd be great to have on the podcast. I think he's based in Dubai. It's called Nomad Capitalist. Yeah, watch this stuff. Love yeah. his stuff. That was actually one of my motivations to try get a few residencies. Okay. So I'm Ireland resident, Spanish resident, and now Dubai resident. Mm. Because if you buy, so the reason I got Irish one, I'm Irish. Spain, if you purchase a property over half a million, then you get given residency. Okay. And then now in Dubai, you just fucking sign up. <laughs> 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 you sign up and they give it to you. Yeah. Um, but so you know, they're the three kind of residencies I have now. And yeah, the main reason is kind of just from listening to these guys' advice, saying that you should really be a global citizen. And especially if you're making a living online, you want to set things up correctly. Mm. And so the people that I you brokered the deal as creative zone to be amazing okay. so you know go have a chat with them mention me tell my ascension they'll give you better advice than me fair enough yeah. and what are you looking to achieve or get out of dubai because it's uh, it's the other side of the world when you were very established in europe <laughs> this guy's like, kind of stupid it's a bit of a flex to say <laughs> hey i got it i got it set up in dubai look fair obviously there, there's a bunch of benefits be it tax and and networking and mm. like even here i've had the most productive week. And that's why I want to really say thank you for having me on because doing podcasts when I'm traveling, it really makes me feel at home. And, okay. uh, you know, it really makes me feel like I'm not just here on the fucking piss drinking on the beach, you know? Mm. You, you feel productive, much more productive yeah. and enjoyable. Mm. And it's a much better way to spend your trip. So, yeah, Dubai is just a hub of the world, especially in fitness and yep. entrepreneurship and content creation. And so, yeah, that's why I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so for, after watching you for so many years, I felt like I got to know a side of you. Now meeting you in person, another side of you, and I think you will thrive in Dubai. Awesome. It's, it's a place where it's content. There's so many new gyms and content everywhere. So you're going to love it. And cool people. Yes. Very cool people that you can learn from and grow with. So Honestly, the nicest people ever, and, and same in Marbella. <laughs> and it's always like the closed-minded people that they see money and they see success and Hey, look, that's rude. They get jealous and they, they hate on it. It's a and very say, Europe mindset. It's yeah. a broke mindset. And they say, oh, pretentious. And because no, you just haven't like made an effort to talk to these people. Mm. Everyone that I've met in Dubai has been so polite and courteous. I love the environment. Just on that topic alone, the people you meet here that are killing it, bro, they, they want to bring you up. They're yeah. not gonna, it's not envious. It's not weird. It's, bro, when you're in this environment, you want to get going. You want to start moving. If I was back home in my hometown, I'd be doing the same things all my friends are doing at 18. But oh, now man. the people around me doing things in Dubai, I'm like, I'm not doing enough. Yes. i got to oh, get going. Man. Oh, bro, the, the <laughs> last week I've seen some shit. <laughs> I'm like, I need to just think and dream yeah, yeah. so much bigger. And so, wait, what turn you from? What's it's the, a town in Kent called Canterbury. Not okay. much going on. Uh, I actually, the, when I played rugby, the jerseys. Yes, uh, yes. It said Canterbury on yes. them. I think it was in New Zealand, though. The same name. Oh, could be. Could yeah, be, uh, yeah, 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 it is. But either way, what that is called is tall poppy syndrome or also crabs in a bucket. And so when you start doing something different, the other crabs will try to pull you back okay. down into the bucket. And so when I started putting myself online, doing YouTube fitness, people would say, people from your town, I'll tell you why, they'll try to pull you back down because they like to say it hits home with them yeah. because they said, I could have done this. They said, he is from down the road from me. He had just the exact same setup mm -hmm. and opportunity as I had, but I squandered it. And that really hits home with some mm. people. So you'll find if you're achieving great things, you won't get hate from people across the world. They don't really care. They're like, mm. oh, go on the Irish lad. Go up. You know, whatever. <laughs> Good for him. It's people from your hometown. They'll be like, fuck, this could have been me. I'm mm. going to try talk shit about him, try to, to ruin his reputation, try to bring him down. So it's always the people from around you that hate you the most. Rob, I can tell you listen to a lot of podcasts and books because you have it all in your mind on, <laughs> on a moment's notice. <laughs> Rob, thank you very much for coming on. I had a, had a great episode with you and, and a great conversation. And I'm, I'm looking forward to see you thrive in Dubai and, and probably establish yourself very well and conquer the city and the con content game out here too. Rob, thank you for coming on, man. No, you put it there, man. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. <laughs>
and we're gonna survive.